Welcome back, fellow mitochondriax, for another episode of Cancer is a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. Today, we're going to continue our discussion of lactate dehydrogenase, or LDH, the all-important enzyme at the end of the glycolysis pathway and what is responsible for the fermentation of glucose into lactate. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as we have been going through this particular enzyme and its byproduct, lactate, we have talked about what it is. We've talked about the end product of cytosolic substrate level phosphorylation, which is lactate, and how that can lead to treatment failure. We then did a detour into how lactate relates to cancer-related cachexia. And then now we are getting back on track talking about regulators of lactate dehydrogenase expression and activity. So just to reorient us, we are looking at how glucose is being hyper uptaked into these cancer cells. It's being hyper metabolized. And due to a variety of reasons, the end product of glycolysis pyruvate is being fermented into lactate. And I added this here. This is where LDH or lactate dehydrogenase A is actually located relative to this entire process. And we have kind of talked about how lactic acid is what is partially responsible for chemotherapy, immunotherapy, and our own immune system resistance. And that is through a variety of signaling cascades and processes. And we kind of looked at how the acidification of the tumor microenvironment down to a pH of about 6 to 6.5, which is much lower than our physiologic pH, is what leads to immune suppression and all the issues that we've talked about in the past when talking about lactate. But what we have not had a chance to really talk about is how lactate dehydrogenase is truly regulated. And it says here, the expression of LDHA can be affected by many factors. MYC or CMYC and HIF-1 can regulate the expression levels of cellular LDH at both the transcriptional and translational levels alone or in collaboration with each other. HIF-1-alpha can be activated by the PI3K AKT mTOR pathway to initiate the transcription of most genes that encode for glycolytic enzymes, including HKM and LDHA. This leads to an increase in glycolysis and glucose consumption for conversion to lactate. At the same time, it attenuates mitochondrial respiration through the induction of PDK or pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase 1. Increased levels of MYC expression have been reported in many tumors, including colon, breast, prostate, and bladder cancers. And the expression of LDHA has been significantly associated with HIF 1 alpha levels in patients with stage 2 and 3 colorectal cancer. ERB2 or HER2 new is an oncogene that is overexpress in approximately 30% of breast cancers and is correlated with a poor prognosis. It is linked to LDHA expression via activation of the PI3K AKT, which leads to HIF-1 activation and upregulation of LDHA genes. And what we have here is we have basically an entire network of how growth factors interact with various signaling cascades, which ultimately upregulate LDHA. And it says here that the regulatory network of LDHA MYC and HIF-1 are the principal transcriptional factors that regulate glucose metabolism. EGF ERBB2 can also increase the expression of LDHA through the ERK, PKM2, and PI3K AKT pathways, as shown above. And we have a table and list of genes and proteins that are reported to regulate lactate dehydrogenase A. And I've circled in particular HIF-1-alpha and CMYC, because those are ones that we kind of come back to over and over and over again. Some of the other ones like estrogen and her 2 nu are also related to the expression of LDHA. But as we'll see later, really most of the growth factors have an effect here. It later says that other factors that are linked to LDHA expression include pyruvate kinase isoform M2, PKM2, and epidermal growth factor receptor EGFR. PKM2 is a transcriptional co-activator that interacts with HIF-1-alpha and the nuclei of a variety of cancer cells. 
induction of PKM2 by prohydroxylation 3 promotes HIF1 binding to hypoxia response elements leading to recruitment of cofactor P300, histone acetylation, and subsequent transactivation of LDHA target genes, therefore promoting the shift from oxidative phosphorylation to glycolysis. So it's, it's not just upregulating the factors that are responsible for the fermentation metabolism and the Warburg metabolism, but it also shifts metabolism away from oxidative phosphorylation to glycolysis. And that is what they call metabolic reprogramming. So I pulled this graphic from another paper as a way to kind of illustrate how all of these signaling cascades kind of interact with each other. And as we'll see later, create a series of vicious cycles that will have to be broken. So we have some kind of a growth factor that could be insulin, that could be some other growth factor and its receptor. And then that's associated with the PI3K AKT mTOR pathway. And then those signaling cascades is what kind of activates or upregulates the other kind of oncogenes such as MYC and HIF1-alpha. And also leads to the blockade of their degradation. And this is just another graphical representation of a very similar thing, only it's very specific. It has EGFR, it has HER2, HER3, HER4 growth factors, and how it regulates all of these pathways through the PI3K AKT mTOR pathway as a variety of other pathways. But what I wanted to kind of lastly show by this particular paper and this particular graphic is that as it is generally in most papers, it talks about, you know, even though there are many factors here, as it stated earlier, it's mostly the CMYK and the HIF1 that are, are primarily responsible for upregulation of LDHA, as well as other glycolytic enzymes as well. And then it also puts NF-kappa B here, which is, which is kind of how inflammation is now tied into this whole loop and the variety of vicious circles that are kind of created by this process. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, we've talked a lot in prior videos about hypoxia, pseudohypoxia, and hypoxia-inducible factors, and how hypoxia-inducible factors are truly responsible for the majority of metabolic reprogramming that goes on in cancer when it comes to metabolism. As you can see here, there's black lightning bolts and there are red lightning bolts. And black lightning bolts are represented things that are induced by HIF1-alpha, and red lightning bolts are what's induced by HIF2-alpha. So if you can see here, there's a lightning bolt next to glucose transporters, for example, or all of the glycolytic enzymes. That's why there's a black lightning bolt here next to all of glycolysis. And then again, we have LDHA or lactate dehydrogenase A that has a black lightning bolt next to it, as well as the MCT transporters, which is responsible for getting lactate outside of the cell. It's also upregulated by HIF1-alpha. Then HIF2-alpha is what's responsible for more so on the glutamine side of things. We've also talked about how MYC, PI3K, mTOR are also involved here. So we see here that here's MYC, here's PI3K, here's MYC. And in this particular graphic, that's relating to the glutamine side of things, but it's also related to the glucose side of the house as well. So what I'm trying to set up for you is that these transcriptional activators, which we've seen over and over again, MYC and HIF, as well as a variety of other growth factors, are what's responsible for upregulating all of the metabolic reprogramming that happens. So I've shown you graphics like this in the past where we have a variety of different pathways that people have heard about, and they all kind of coalesce at glucose metabolism. And if I had another graphic, I would show that how these also coalesce at glutamine metabolism as well as a way to set up the metabolic capability for these cancer cells to ferment glucose and glutamine. Now, if that wasn't bad enough, what if I was to tell you that lactate itself, the end product of glycolysis and glucose fermentation, is what also upregulates the inflammatory cascades through NF-kappa B and other cytokines, HIF-1-alpha, MAPK, PI3K, AKT, mTOR pathway, cyclic AMP. So what I'm trying to say is, is that when lactic acid is created by lactate dehydrogenase. You'll see that a lot of these signaling cascades will then further upregulate lactate dehydrogenase, leading to 
a vicious cycle. So what we have here is we have lactate dehydrogenase. Lactate dehydrogenase is going to, through lactate, upregulate NF-kappa B, and that's going to lead to proliferation and metastases. But then, in addition to that, lactate will also stabilize hypoxia factor as a pseudo-hypoxic factor, which again, then leads to further upregulations of lactate dehydrogenase and all of the glycolytic enzymes and glutamine-related enzymes. And so what we have here, and this is my own graphic, you can tell the difference because this is like a research papers graphic, and this is my ability to make a graphic. But the bottom line is where we have a vicious cycle. So we have some hypoxia or pseudohypoxic stimulus. Again, just to reiterate, the pseudohypoxic stimuluses could be oxidative stress, it could be growth factors, it could be oncometabolites, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But that's what's going to lead to the stabilization of hypoxia factors. Those hypoxia factors are going to then upregulate glucose uptake, glucose fermentation, and lactate dehydrogenase expression. Then when glucose is fermented through lactate dehydrogenase, we're going to make lactate. And then lactate is going to lead to inflammation and lactate is going to lead to pseudohypoxic state, which then round and round we go, right? Because then the inflammation that's made by lactate is going to then be also a pseudohypoxic stimulus. And you can see how this is like a vicious, vicious, vicious cycle. And it all coalesces at glucose and glutamine metabolism, which brings us back to treating cancer as a metabolic disease. Because if we play the game that is being played by medicine right now, which is having a, an inhibitor of AKT or PI3K or EGFR or HER2 or whatever, then we are playing essentially metabolic whack-a-mole. And that is very likely a losing battle because there's just too many targets for you to hit. But when you know that all of those roads lead to glucose metabolism and glutamine metabolism, then the answer is fairly straightforward, at least from my view. How do you effectively break these vicious cycles? You cut off the cancer's ability to use glucose and glutamine, which we've talked about over and over again on this channel. So in conclusion, it says cancer is not only a genetic disease, but a disease of dysregulated bioenergetic metabolism. Cancer cells reprogram their metabolism to satisfy their bioenergetic and biosynthetic requirements and increase glycolysis as a primary biochemical characteristics of tumors. Therefore, targeting their associated metabolic pathways may prevent or suppress cancer progression. This review illustrates the link between LDHA, lactate dehydrogenase A, and glycolysis by providing a broad overview of LDHA and its interactions with tumors. The level of LDHA is elevated in many malignant tumors and associated with tumor proliferation and malignant growth with potential implications for tumor diagnosis and therapy. Inhibitors of LDHA expression could potentially interfere with cancer development. However, most currently available glycolytic inhibitors have low potency and high doses are required with the potential high levels of systemic toxicity, which restricts their use. Therefore, identifying specific glycolytic inhibitors with higher potencies has become an urgent task and several small organic molecules have been recently developed as novel anti-tumor chemotherapeutic agents. Inhibition of LDHA is unlikely to cause major side effects in humans under ordinary circumstances as hereditary LDHA deficiency only causes myoglobinuria after intense anaerobic exercise. This suggests that novel drug-like small molecules able to inhibit LDHA enzymatic activity may constitute safe agents able to interfere with tumor growth and invasiveness, making them attractive targets for chemotherapeutics. However, further studies are required to elicit their efficacy and safety in cancer therapies. So before we actually get into those LDH inhibitors, drug and natural, so I want to present both options and what's available. We're going to talk about how LDH or lactate dehydrogenase relates to a variety of cancer prognoses in the next video. So if you like videos like this, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time.